God! Disaster Blaster. F*** this game. The kind folks over at Dog Theory Games sent us a copy of Disaster Blaster. And to be perfectly honest, it's infuriating! But, if you're into challenging shooters, and you can overlook a few shortcomings, there's a lot of fun to be had here. Disaster Blaster is an arcade-style shooter that feels like the epic classic Robotron 2084 had a love child with Sinistar, somehow, just, whatever. Let's dig in and find out what's good and what's not about Disaster Blaster, because God, this game! God. The gameplay is pretty straightforward. You fly around as a cube and you shoot other cubes. There's two difficulty settings, normal, where you can get power-ups to allow an extra hit or two, and disaster, where it's one hit and you're dead. The level select screen is laid out in a grid. You start out with one level available to you to play. Once the level is completed, the adjacent levels will be unlocked. There are different objectives you need to complete, and the objectives vary. Some levels you navigate a maze and only need to find the exit. In other levels you have to destroy blocks to collect a certain number of treasures. In others you have to find and destroy a special block or two to progress. There are also eight boss battle squares, each with a new boss based off a normal enemy found in that area of the map. The ten blocks stacked at the right of the screen are a series of boss battles, combining all the bosses from the previous battles in the map. To help prevent the 100 available levels from getting repetitive, they change the way you're able to navigate these cubist mazes. Some have you fly around freely while others will auto-scroll, forcing you to look ahead to avoid being trapped and crushed by oncoming walls. This adds a new dimension to the game and helps subdue the repetitive nature of this type of game. Here's what I liked and what I didn't. Let's see if Disaster Blaster is worth shrinking the balance in your Steam Wallet. First off, the music in this game is great. Each area has its own song and does a good job of keeping the driving techno dance beats from getting repetitive. Every original track has excitement and drive to each level. Well, I say original, but the stage select screen reminds me an awful lot of the Mega Bomberman intro, but that could just be me. Take a listen and tell me what you think down in the comments. <laughs> On the whole though, great soundtrack guys. Second up, there are a varying array of enemies and bosses. You have basic blocks to avoid, blocks that fire projectiles at you, blocks that reflect your shots, blocks that break into multiple pieces. You get the point. The bosses you encounter are based off of the normal assortment of enemies, only inflated to enormous sizes. This makes battles more challenging, but at the same time you'll have experience with these types of enemies from the levels leading up to the boss battle. That brings us to the topic of strategy. Yeah, it sounds really weird talking about strategy in an arcade style pixel shooter, but some enemies have definite weaknesses or particular weapon which they are extremely vulnerable. To find them, you'll have to learn by trial and error, which leads to many deaths, much frustration, outbursts of rage. That's right, I'm not using the term rage lightly. The difficulty in this game rarely feels fair. The first major issue I have is the controls. The controls take some time to get used to. You're able to play with the keyboard and mouse using the WASD keys for movement and the mouse to aim and fire. This works okay, but this game is very much built like a twin stick shooter. Luckily, gamepads are supported. Move the left analog stick and your block moves in that direction. Move the right analog stick and you fire in that direction. The perfect control setup. And it's let down by the fact that all movement is digital. In a game where you have enemies, obstacles, and bullets covering the entire screen at times, you need precise controls. And despite the five plus hours I spent in this game, I never felt like I was able to accurately maneuver through the barrage of hazards. Now I mentioned earlier that enemies have weaknesses. I love this idea. However, the way it is implemented here, the game becomes drastically easier once you start to discover them. Bosses that seemed impossible to begin with were suddenly no problem at all. And by the time I made it to the end boss, I was able to beat him on the first try with no issues. As soon as you know what weapon to use or how to defeat a particular enemy, the game loses almost all of its challenge. I'd like to go back to the controls one more time. This was a big area of contention for me. The gamepad controls are just odd. 
The bumpers disable sound and music. Pressing up or down on the D-pad toggles full screen and windowed mode. And pressing B a couple of times exits the game entirely with no prompts. And there are no options to change this. Trust me, I looked. Through my entire playthrough, I would randomly turn off the sound effects. Or when I was in a level select screen, use the D-pad out of habit and find myself suddenly playing in a small window. I have no idea why these functions are mapped to the controller in the first place. This is definitely something that needs to change, or at the very least, give us the ability to change the controller settings and the options. This game pissed me off. It pissed me off a lot. I kept wanting to quit playing, delete all my footage, and move on to something else. But if you stick with it and you get past all of the rage, it is a pretty good way to kill some time. The game isn't perfect. It has some definite problems that would be deal breakers for some people. But right now, it's only $5 on Steam. So I would say if you're interested in bullet hell shooters or classic arcade shooters, then you probably get your money's worth out of this game. If it looks like the kind of game that you might like and you can look past a few issues, I'd say give it a shot. <laughs> give it a shot. <laughs> now that is a pun.